Good morning to everyone. It's really the prayer of my heart that you would feel the comfort of God in this morning. Especially His comfort. Because we are in a, in a difficult time uh, with COVID-19 and everything around it. Financial problems, emotional problems. And then there's death. So it's also in our heart this morning to, to say our condolences to that congregation members that lost a loved one. We're thinking of Pat's family and we're also thinking of um, Lynn, Lynn's family. May God really protect you and comfort you and give you hope and peace in this morning. Then we think of, um, we say congratulations, and think of her Anne that had a, had a birthday yesterday. May God really uh, bless you and keep you. And so many congratulations from us all. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for the sunlight, because without sunlight, we wouldn't be able to see one another. Because of sunlight, we are capable, or our, our physics is capable to, to derive vitamin D. Because of sunlight, Plants is capable of making their own their own food. Because of light, people can get X-rays. Because of light, people that's got a brain tumor could could get medical help. And so we can go on and on and on all due to you because the Bible says you are light you created light but you are light and thank you that you've sent Jesus Christ to this world to show us the light To show us your light. If you help us this morning to see this light. To see you. To experience you. And to live through the power of this light. Thank you that we may worship you this morning. And we pray. We pray for our church. We pray for a revival in our church. The revival of light. We pray for revival in this country. That your light will fall on every part of this country of us. And that, that this your light will fall in every heart and soul that's walking in South Africa this morning. But that it would be in such a way that we would fall on our knees and repent before you. Repent our sins. Repent our wicked ways. Repent our thoughts. We need this light, Father. We need it. And forgive us our stubbornness. Forgive us our pride. We are so proud. And we're so prideful. And it's not wrong to have proud. But the moment that our proud stands between you and us and revival, it is wrong. It is sin. We find it so difficult to repent. We find it so difficult to be honest. 
we find it so difficult to really love one another because we we tend to walk better in darkness than in your light. And now it is the prayer of my heart that you will bless us and protect us and give us vision and hope in this darkness period of times because you are light. Amen. The Old Testament scripture reading is from Genesis 1. Where we read the creation of us and the whole world and everything on this earth. And it's verse 3. Perhaps I can read verse 2 also. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And then verse 3. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. I think you've heard it in my prayer this morning. Only a small portion of the of the wonder of light. And without light, we won't wouldn't have been able to live. And so we could go on and on and on. And the question that we need to ask ourselves this morning, right through the whole service and sermon, do we have this light? Do we allow this light to shine in our innermost? And do we live this light towards the world? Therefore, let us repent our sins. Heavenly Father, we must ask you this morning for forgiveness. Forgiveness that we so often Try to cover the light of you. And then we are actually stupid and clueless because the word says to us everything that, that has been done in the darkness will come into the light. We are so clueless. Therefore, forgive us, Father. And help us to accept this morning your light. And help us to go and live your light into this dark world. We're into and in the midst of our families, in the midst of our friends, our church, our the work that we are at. And let us show the light to people. with grace and mercy. Amen. The New Testament reading we find in John. John 1. In the beginning, listen carefully, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Then verse 4. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. Verse 5. The light shines in the darkness. But the darkness has not understood it. In him was life, and that life was the light. And the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Heavenly Father, we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe that He came to earth to die for our sins. We believe that He was born from the Virgin Mary. We believe that He forgives us our sin and sins. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in a church. We believe in the forgiveness of our sins. We believe in eternal life. We believe in the resurrection. We believe in the Holy Spirit that has been poured out. We believe. But help us to believe. Amen. I've got the privilege here this morning of having... Um, Two of my students here, and I would like to call them to the front to receive their phase one certificate in life skills. It is um, Charles and Susanna Lowe. They are married and they are a couple. So please come to the front, receive your certificates, and just share with us in brief what you have learned and what this studies is reading unto you. Please do welcome with us. Before you start, I would like to um, Charles Johannes Lowe, congratulations Charles. God really bless you. And Susanna Lowe, congratulations. God bless you. Okay. Good morning everyone. I would just like to thank God because all praises are um, due to God. And I'd like to thank God for allowing us to meet the doctor um, to put us on this journey of life. Um, since I've started the classes, my life has changed tremendously. I also had the opportunity to speak to people, to see people different in a different light. Um, and then I want to thank my husband for supporting me. I want to thank my parents for what they put in me. My child for understanding that my men must go to classes. And I want to thank you for this opportunity to stand here in your church. May God bless you. May God bless the doctor and his family. And may our light shine. Thank you. Good morning. I'm the husband of Susanna, and she she uh, she said, said a lot now. And first, I want to say also thank you to the Lord, and thank you. You was in a, uh, I myself was in a position where I lost my mother in 2018. I was going through the drought, and this morning the and the Lord shows the light, and this morning I hear, I pray to the Lord that time, the Lord give me a light, give me a sign. And this morning, He shows me the light is there. And you must just not sit and wait for the light, go look for the light. Sometimes you go through the tunnel, and the Lord is still there. You believe, and then I met the doctor, and I can say, thank you. Thank you for our Lord, and thank you for my family for the supporting, and He knows, a certain struggle, struggling I go through, and 
I was just felt pray for me, felt, and he was there for me. And when we were to the end, he stood away forward, and I said, thank you, the congregation, to support the Savior, and the Savior, the Savior used his Savior to learn us, to teach us. And thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you very much and thank you that you are here with us today. It is wonderful in having you here with us. Um, scripture reading this morning is from John chapter 8. John chapter 8. It is um, it is a part where Jesus preached and shared his knowledge and shared a lot of wisdom with his listeners and the disciples. So this was on the Mount of Olive where they spoke. And where a lot of people sat around him trying to hear his wisdom of course with a lot of negative thoughts in their hearts and and questions but let us read then from verse 12 when Jesus spoke again to the people he said I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your own testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right, because I'm not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law it is written that the testimony of two men is valid. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, asked him, where is your father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would have known my father also. We will end our scripture reading there. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Now you as congregation members know by now that we have this series that we are following. And the series that we are following is, is, is a built around the question that Jesus asked in Caesarea Philippi unto his disciples. Who do the people say I am? And you remember that Jesus asked them that question there in the midst of a lot of temples and other buildings that um, worshipped or showed to the worship of idols, other gods. So there was a reason for Jesus asking them that question there. As they were walking, 
he, he shrugged and, he sh and they looked at the, the environment. They saw the temples and they saw the idols, the pillars, etc. That's been uh, there because in honor of other gods. And that is where he asked them. And then they answered. Some say that. Some say that person. Some say that person. And then he went to the further and he asked them directly. But you, who do you say I am? Now we are also confronted by that question this morning. Again. Because we just had Christmas celebrations. And we all went into partying or, or uh, meeting with friends or with families. Although it was restricted, hopefully. And I think the congregation will remember my warnings. My warnings of... You will see during Christmas we will all tend to forget the law of gravity. And we will all live in the air a bit. We will all put our negative thoughts and our things in the past underneath the carpet. And then a few days after Christmas, weeks after Christmas, when we get back to the normal our life seems to fall apart. And I've seen that now. Also in my private practice. As a psychologist and a therapist. I see it. People fall apart. And myself. Myself is sitting sometimes in my study and I wonder where is God? Why doesn't God intervene? And of course, there's in my own soul and in my own psyche that little bit of, of a voice that's nibbling here at my brain, at my psyche. Is Jesus really there? Therefore, this morning we are we are at this verse where Jesus said, I am the light. Now, where does light come from? It comes from God. God created light. God is light. But I wonder if you ever have, have thought and asked yourself the question, why did he create light? Why did God create light? God created light in order for his plan to be fulfilled. And what is his plan? His plan is that we as human beings who stand in a relationship with him, That, he, that, that, that we will repent in front of him. That we will be part of the covenant that he started. He wanted us to see him. To experience him as God. Triune. As God Father. As God Creator. Therefore, we have read this morning... Let us just read again Genesis 1, what we've read. Now, listen very carefully. Verse 2. Now the earth was formless and empty. And darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The earth was empty and formless. And then 